Okay, welcome everybody back to Grim Captivation. <laughs> Spooky. Yes, this is uh, the paranormal podcast that I've started, and this is episode number one. Because the first one was just an introduction. And uh, yeah, so this is our first official episode. Hooray. So, uh, for this first um, episode, I actually wanted to go into definitions like so a lot of it's going to be definitions of spirits and specters that's what i called it pretty much just definitions of spirits and specters basically we're just going to go into a lot of the definitions um and a lot of these things we'll pretty much encounter on the show uh so you'll hear a whole bunch of them and i just wanted to go through the definitions of like this is what it is in gen like in general just basically in general so, uh, and obviously there's going to be more things that sprout from it. These are just broad definitions of things that kind of, you know, have like sub... <laughs> I was about to say sub-genres, but like, you know what I mean? Like, it branches out into different little things, little niches across the world, which is actually what we're going to cover in the next... either the next episode or the next couple of, like, spirits, like, uh, across the world uh, in general. And obviously there's thousands of myth... Uh, like myths about spirits and creatures and all that stuff like that so but uh for this one it's all about definitions of spirits so here we go for the first one which is really just like the definition of spirit which is uh says a supernatural being or essence an often malevolent being that is bodiless but can become visible a malevolent being that enters and possesses a human being it could also be added, like for my notes, it could also be added that a spirit is part of the essence of somebody, the sentient side of a person. So pretty much their intelligence in a way. So I think like, in general, I think like a spirit is literally just like the soul of somebody. I feel like it's very uh, interchangeable that spirits and souls are pretty much, are kind of, the, I wouldn't say like the same thing, but it's, it's pretty close where a spirit is, the person, the identity of somebody, so. Uh, which leads into spiritualism, which is literally just like the belief that spirits of the dead communicate with the living, usually through some sort of medium. So a medium could be a person, could be a Ouija board, could be anything that kind of passes, like a conduit, that you can interact with something. So the spiritualism is like the belief that you can talk to the, the dead, sometimes not audibly and sometimes just visually sometimes with just a breath basically the belief of that so kind of like simple like that a specter is a visible disembodied spirit something that haunts or perturbs the mind so this one says the it's visible but it's disembodied so that means for me i think is that it's a uh, it can't take the full form it's like a specter, it can be like a little head, like a floating head, or like a hand reaching out, or something like that. So I think a specter is like a, uh, I guess like, it's like a ghost in a way, because the ghost is the next one, but it's like interchangeable between specter and ghost, I feel like. Because the ghost definition is uh, a disembodied soul, especially the soul of a dead person, obviously, believed to be an inhabitant of the unseen world, or to appear to the living in bodily likeness. So that's kind of like where it can be debated between specter and ghost. Um, about not just like the visibility, but like the stages of what the apparitions are. Because the apparition, I feel like, is the, the process of being visible, visible, you know, between ghosts and specters. So I think that a ghost is basically like a developed spirit. Uh, since a spirit is, you know, the essence and the sentient side of a person. A ghost can then pretty much take the shape, but then it's not fully visible like a shadow or a mist. But then they can be seen in body likeness, they become a specter for that moment, pretty much. So, it's in between that stages, so, I don't know, I just feel like it can be in between specters and ghosts. So, I feel like they can be interchangeable between those two. That's what I feel like. Uh, shadow people. So, shadow people are... Uh, 
interesting and uh, even I feel like some people even in like paranormal uh, communities some people don't really believe in shadow people just because it's it does extend the beliefs of I guess what the, what the creatures are so shadow people are supernatural shadow like humanoid figures that according to believers are seen flickering on walls and ceilings in the viewers peripheral vision they are often reported moving with quick jerky movements and quickly disintegrate into walls or mirrors. So it's kind of shadow, that makes sense, shadow yeah. people. So uh, They're believed to be evil and aggressive in nature, although a few people consider them to be a form of guardian angels sometimes. Uh, alleged eyewitness reports of these beings are often similar in these accounts. There are almost always the same forms. So there's usually a blob-like cluster that uh, occasionally can have like uh, sprouts like roots or tendrils or you know things like that uh, it could be a child-sized being usually they are um, in a pair usually it's like a boy and a girl or like siblings or you know like which is for for us for for us that's the majority of what shadow people stories have been it's like this pair of children that pretty much have to ask permission in order to to go into a premises into a house or a hotel or a car anything like that but then once you uh, allow that permission then they're pretty much just gonna like try to do their worst to whoever allows them in um, there's also um, reports of a tall willowy figure with uh, a jack-o-lantern sized head and a tall figure with a hat so the the hat man is a huge figure of, of the shadow people um, a few people have I guess seen seen him or whatever but it's like some like really well-dressed well-dressed figure with a really big like uh, I think it's like a top hat so it's interesting but the yeah the hat man's very dangerous I feel like because he's, he's one of the main haunters of the shadow people so uh, in these accounts, the figures typically uh, follow a progression from the ambiguous blob and finally into, you know, a tall person or a, you know, like a child or whatever. So it starts with a, a blob of a shadow and then it just morphs into the figure, which is pretty scary. So um, less frequently, but still reported, there are red glowing eyes um, from some of these, especially from like the Hat Man and stuff, um, because. I think I think black-eyed children are like um, I don't know if you would consider them shadow people or not. I think it's just like another sub like sub creature in the paranormal thing. I don't know if I would consider them shadow people because I know that obviously black-eyed children means like they have you know black eyes, but the whole red eye thing goes back to like the Hat Man. So I don't know. There's a lot of variations between forms. So. Um, and then these beings are said to be movely, uh, said to move extremely fast and travel through solid matter. Uh, they typically are said to have no discernible features such as mouths, nose, or eyes. So it's pretty much just like flat, nothing. Uh, their forms are usually described as somewhat skeletal or thin. Uh, direct visual contact is rarely reported um, with shadow people um, because they are said to usually disappear before they can be seen like clearly. The whole thing so and that's kind of the main thing that I have about shadow people it's kind of uh, I don't know I feel like it's debatable <laughs> with shadow people where it's like they're kind of like in the corner of your eye kind of thing so it's like well it could be somebody's imagination could be something that they saw on a movie especially in modern days so it's a little trickier to really hone down on what a shadow person really is but I don't know what do you think? Do you think they're out there? Oh, yeah. You think shadow people exist? Mm hmm <laughs> I don't know. Maybe. I'm in the maybe. I have an open mind. Yeah, I know you do. I'm, I'm in the maybe, though. I was like, I, 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 could, I could see it, maybe. Uh, next one we got is the doppelgangers, which are uh, creepy just in general. Uh, a doppelganger is a mysterious double or a lookalike of somebody. Um, it's often seen as a harbinger of bad luck or, or a bad omen. Uh, in folklore, the doppelganger is actually um, sometimes said to have no shadow or reflection, much like uh, some of the vampiric traits. Uh, these doubles are usually malef uh, malef I was gonna say maleficent. <laughs> malicious 
and they can haunt their more innocent counterparts. Uh, they may give bad advice or put thoughts into their victims' heads. Seeing one's own doppelganger or that of a friend or a relative is usually considered very bad luck, often heralding death or serious illness. In some traditions, doppelgangers are considered a personification of death itself. Yeah, so doppelgangers are not the greatest. <laughs> and I think like doppelgangers in general are just really creepy, where like you see pictures of like uh, I remember like way way back where it was like oh the doppelganger of this like actor or whatever and then they would they were like a side-by-side -side thing of like faces and it was like scarily similar so I don't know I, I think sometimes people have that moment too where it's just like you think you know somebody from like behind or from like the side and you go up and try to talk and then it's like oh wait that's somebody else and it's like a little awkward but I don't know I feel like doppelgangers are I don't know what do you think do you think doppelgangers exist in the world, yeah. doppelgangers. For sure. Yeah. You don't have a yeah. I mean, you can have somebody look like you. Maybe. I don't know. I don't know about the actual, actual doppelganger, like the entity itself. But. I'd say so. Hmm. I, I know that there can be people who look like you, but I don't know about the actual, like, somebody haunting you. Yeah. So. And of course, this is like, I guess, like, as I say this, it's like, oh, well, why did you start a paranormal show to begin with if you don't believe in most of this stuff? It's like, well, I'm trying to broaden my mind here because I believe in ghosts, I believe in spirits and all that stuff, you know, good versus evil, whole spiritual battle, you know, things like that. I, like, I totally believe that. It's just the other sub subgenres of uh, ghosts and spirits are kind of difficult to wrap my mind around, I suppose. Like, in, in reality, in stories and, like, and books and movies it's awesome like I like seeing them but it's just sometimes I just don't really think that it's real so yeah. uh, a few more here uh, so we got one two three more so third one here our third to last here is the wraiths so this isn't ring wraiths from Lord of the Rings but this is an actual wraith <laughs> uh, a wraith is an undead creature whose name originated in Scottish folklore so a wraith is a type of ghost or spirit, um, and wraiths were usually traditionally said to be embodiments of souls who are either on the verge of death or who have recently passed on. In modern times, the concept of a wraith is more likely to refer to an evil spirit, particularly one that has unfinished business in the mortal realm. They're typically depicted as skeletal figures draped in tattered rags and are most commonly associated with graveyards or other haunted lo uh, locations. Uh, the modern perception of a wraith is that of an entity which actively seeks harm to those that it encounters, no matter their motivation. So, wraiths are very evil as well, but the whole thing of this originating from Scottish folklore of basically it's like a spirit that is like hanging on, like barely, barely hanging on to like the, the actual body of a person, I suppose. So it's like on that brink of death. Or it's like right, right after they die. So it's that in-between phase where it's like either right before or right after. And that's what a wraith is. Where they know their surroundings and they know the world still. Which I guess, suppose would make sense. And I, I guess the wraiths like nowadays, obviously with like Dementors from Harry Potter or yeah, Ring Wraiths from Lord of the Rings, you know, wraiths are very much depicted like that. Or, I mean, I guess you could say Grim Reaper is kind of wraith-like in the way that it is because it has like a skeletal head and like draped in robes and stuff like that and it seeks harm obviously but Grim Reaper is more of like the just the carrier of souls I feel like more than a, more than a wraith pretty much it's like a specific wraith <laughs> so I don't know would you would you put the Grim Reaper as a wraith or no because yeah. it act because the wraiths in modern day yeah because, I don't know, because, like, the, the wraiths are, like, they're actively seeking out harm. But, like, the Grim Reaper is just there to, like, co collect souls, pretty much. The way that I kind of gather from it. I don't know. That's what, that's what I think. I don't think it's an, I don't think the Grim Reaper is an actual, like, uh, wraith itself. No. It's just, it's its own, I don't even, I don't even know. It's, it's, a, it's its own messenger. Yeah. I, it's, it's interesting. I don't know. Like, I don't know. I don't believe in the Grim Reaper, personally. I know you do. 
some yeah. experience. I know. I, I know you do. For me, I, I don't. But obviously for personal mm -hmm. experiences and whatnot. So, uh, two left here. Uh, next is the poltergeist. So, this is a noisily, usually mischievous ghost held to be responsible for unexplained noises. One of the tricks poltergeist is known is for making knocking noises, so that it will come as no surprise to learn that the word, word poltergeist translates literally from German as knocking spirit. So, um, yeah, pretty much just poltergeist is things that just mess around with, like, sounds. That's what I think. Poltergeist is pretty much just, like, a noisy spirit in general. So knocking or like in the movie, turning on TV, yeah. stuff like that, staticky, trying to reach out with voices, but it's never really seen, I feel like. I, I feel like the poltergeist is never really means to be seen, just to, it's just like a playful spirit, I feel like. So I don't know if it's like poltergeists are like childlike spirits maybe, because they're just, you know, like going around the house like knocking or rolling like you know like toys around or turning the TV on because it's never usually anything bad I don't think it's usually ever a bad thing to have a poltergeist it's just annoying for some people yeah like if we had one like it's whatever because it's just noises yeah so I don't know poltergeist not not too bad not as bad as as the wraith or the doppelganger because those are terrible <laughs> and the last one are orbs so orbs are a little difficult to wrap around uh, for some people. Uh, these orbs of light are generally thought to be manifestations of energy, uh, which is why they're sometimes referred to as ghost orbs or spirit orbs. Uh, they can be sighted in different colors, and although they're most commonly spotted as transparent or like clear orbs, kind of like in like cameras, it's like looks like a like a, like a floating dust speck, but sometimes it like moves in a weird pattern. Um, it's generally thought that different colored orbs have different meanings. Um, that the energy captured within the orb is trying to convey some sort of message. So, kind of depends on, on that pretty much. But I think like most orbs that like we've seen on videos and stuff like that are usually those transparent light colored ones. So, uh, but yeah, and those are the definitions of spirits and specters that I have for now. Obviously, there's plenty plenty more out there <laughs> but this is just like the broad like uh like the, just the broad titles of what we're gonna go through and i don't know depends on if you guys really believe you know in all this spirits and specters like i said like i i believe in a few of them but not all of them so i mean like it's just one of these shows that it's just like well it's just fun to explore the the paranormal stuff that's out there mm -hmm. well you know the stuff that we know um, yeah, I don't know. Do you have anything to add to anything? Spirits? Or definitions? Anything like that? Or no? Um, not really. Just my own experiences other than that, but... Yeah. Definitions? No. Do you believe in everything that was on this list? Yes, sir. <laughs> like I said, I have an open mind. I know you do. <laughs> everything I've been through, of course I believe. <laughs> yeah, so I'm like, well, I'll, I'll try my best to, to see if I can, uh, convince myself that these things are real but uh yeah uh the next episode we're actually going to go through a bunch of ghosts that uh, well ghost creatures of the night spirits all that stuff i'm trying to boot away the cat so uh pretty much just like cultural traditions of ghosts and and figures that are seen and of course it's not everything because that would take like forever you can make a whole show about you know different things from across the world and have different stories so I'm just going to go over a few that I found interesting for the next one. So I think uh, that kind of covers everything for the first episode yeah. of Groom Captivation. Uh, obviously, it's going to be a lot more scarier as it progresses. Uh, but this is a lot more analytical stuff, mm -hmm. I suppose. Just reading off definitions and seeing if we believe in it. And letting others know that, hey, this is... This is what a spirit is. This is what a wraith is. Uh, if you believe in it, cool. And if not, then, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. But this is what it is. This is what it does. Broad, general, this is what it is. So, yeah. Nice, simple layout of a show, I feel like. So, mm -hmm. yeah. I think that's about everything for episode one. And I hope you guys enjoyed the first episode. 
of Grim Captivation. I uh, hope you guys like the setup because I like it. It's really cool. I got candles and it's and it's dark, <laughs> but not too dark. Yeah, so it nice. it'll, it'll be fun. I feel like. Yeah. So, all right, everybody, just stay spooky because that's all I got for now. <laughs> I don't got a closing. <laughs> I'll think of one later. Yeah. See you later, guys. <laughs>